Hey folks, welcome back to the Real Estate Excellence Podcast. Superstar, best of the best, rock star. My guest today was recently awarded the top 100 real estate professionals nationwide. She is an amazing team leader, broker, founder of an award-winning brokerage. She has 15 years of real estate experience. Her passion has built her quite a reputation as she consistently is rated the top 200 listing agents in Florida, top 5% of realtors in Northeast Florida, named best of the best realtors, best of the best brokerage, and has been featured in Top Agent Magazine. She feels her success can be credited to her evolving mindset and focus on balancing technology with building relationships. She is the owner broker of Crystal Clear Realty, Clear Guidance, and with shining results, let's welcome Crystal Duckworth to the show. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad you were able to make it today. Thanks for having me. Excellent. Uh, just you know, doing some some uh, research on you because um, I don't see a lot on social media, though you have some great graphics there. You're not a, a big social media person, but you've, you've popped up on my Facebook a few times. And then I, I researched, I said, you know, I got to get Crystal on the show. She's a top producer. Um, and uh, as we've closing in on our 50th episode, and uh, so you're episode number 47. Uh, glad to have you on. So I'm just going to start off the show as I, I do with everybody. Just, hey, where, where are you from? So I'm from uh, Battle, uh, actually Bellevue, Michigan. I like to say Battle Creek because Bellevue is such a small town. Not a lot of people know about it. Um, we had one stoplight in our city. I was born and raised on a farm there of 70 acres where we had nice. uh, goats and chickens and um you know, I really loved growing up in a small town, but ever since I was little, I really had a big mindset, right. and I always wanted to go to school in Florida. That was somehow instilled in me from way back from, from when I can remember. Right. Um, so that's where I was born, and that's how I actually got to Florida. <laughs> so you, you, I mentioned, I, I cross I you mentioned Bellevue High School, mm -hmm. but you also mentioned St. Philip Catholic Central. Yes. So I went to St. Philip. I actually ended up graduating from Bellevue. They're mm. real close to each other. Okay. Um, so essentially in the same area. Excellent. Yeah. So what brought you, What you, you just you just wanted to go to college? You graduated from high school and just say, I'm going south? What, what brought you to Florida? Uh, so the day after I graduated high school, um, I packed up my car and moved to Florida. Um, I was actually um, accepted at the University of South Florida in Tampa. Okay. So that's where I went to college. Um, from 2000 and 2004, and I graduated with two degrees in uh, business and psychology. So, well, let's just start off. I mean, it was just South Florida, just when you were looking at Florida schools in general. I just imagine you wanted to come to Florida. Was that just, hey, that just sounds like a really cool school. Let me go there. Yeah, it was one of the schools that accepted me. I liked when I went to visit. Um, mm. I really liked um, the culture and um, the feeling and the opportunity that it had for their business school. And, and as that well. campus has just exploded. Oh gosh, it's probably yes, nothing like yes. you were when you were there. Just what fifteen years ago? Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what did you envision yourself doing? You're, you go. You had these degrees. What did you see yourself doing for a career? Well, I always knew that I wanted to be a business owner. My whole family are composed of entrepreneurs and business owners and consultants and executives. And that's how I was, you know, raised. But more importantly, that's how I was fueled as well. Mm -hmm. So um, it, this, it actually just evolved um, by accident, but I knew it was meant to be in real estate because right. I started doing medical sales when I graduated. I was the regional sales manager of Florida and Georgia. Right. And although I really loved it and it fueled my passion for sales and dealing with people, um, I decided to, I always just loved the art of real estate. And right. I knew I was coming across some really good clientele. And I thought to myself, if I could just close one or two doctors a year, that's <laughs> a really good side money. Right. And something that I really enjoy doing. Um, so I started doing that on the side and I actually oh. enjoyed it so much more than what I was doing. Right. It fueled my entrepreneurial spirit. And at the end of the day, even if you're, I wasn't a broker at the time, you're still kind of owning and running your own business. Right. Um, and so I started doing so so well with it that I phased out of the um, medical sales and I started doing real estate full time. Wow, that's, that's, that, that's interesting there. I didn't realize, you know, obviously you don't necessarily see that when you're just looking at someone's LinkedIn. Um, how, how, you know, it, I always we talk a lot about with a lot of my guests their beginnings because we do have you know a lot of agents out there and they may be do, been doing this two or three years but just haven't found the way yet you know they're they're still trudging through this 
and, and when you look back at that time period, you had a solid income coming in from your um, uh, your your day job. Mm-hmm. Um, how did that help you sort of ramp up and kind of, you know, shorten your learning curve with the real estate? Because you weren't you weren't worrying about feeding yourself at night, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Well, it got to the point where I did have to, you know, stop doing because it's it's hard to just, in my opinion, to be successful in real estate and only do it part time. Right. So it did get to that point where I had to have work on, uh, um, you know, just faith and um, work hard and work smart right. and um, just focus on real estate. And it didn't come easy. Um, although it was a nice gradual transition, and I realized very quickly the opportunity made some good money right. to, to trade off of what I came from and the medical sales. It didn't come easy, but the opportunity was crystal clear. <laughs> so, I mean, you, you, just, you, 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 said, hey, I'm going to do this part-time. Did you have a, a mentor or someone that was you know, a go-to person? Or what, what helped you evolve in that, mm-hmm. that time period as you started the transition from one to the other? Yeah, so um, my mentors are my parents. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're now both business consultants and ha- have had successful businesses. And, um, you know, although they're my parents, there was still that really good, solid business relationship right. there and advice. Right. So um, I had strong support from them. I mean, they always say, you know, I'm your biggest fan, and but yet they're the first to tell me, okay, be careful, you right. know, and um, let's get realistic here. So I did have them, you know, mentoring me and... Um, were they in real estate or just totally different no, type of business? No, my dad ended up doing, you know, he does it on the side for fun, but no, they, they weren't in real estate. Okay. Um, but yeah, you know, that was some of my support system. Um, also, I'm very, I, I'm very tech savvy and I just did a ton of research online. There mm-hmm. are so many valuable sources. And so much more today than oh, it was. Oh gosh, when, yes. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. um, I'd watched a ton of YouTube, and I don't even think I didn't do podcasts. Podcasts weren't as no, prevalent yeah, back then. But that wasn't <laughs> lots of research and yeah. forums online, and right. um, you know about growing businesses. And there was this book from one of my professors in college um, called "Romancing the Clock." And that has helped me achieve that work-life balance as well. So I kind of relied on family for that source and then also um, just some transparent data. Yeah, because I imagine there was a time period where both your day job and the real estate started to put that demand on you Mm -hmm. where you had to start making that decision to go one way or the other full full time. I, I do find it interesting. A lot of my guests that I've had on, you know, we talk about that support. Because I think for a lot of uh, individuals who want to get into real estate today, let alone being entrepreneurs in general and in any, in, in anything, some of their biggest naysayers are some of the people closest to them who they want to emotionally get support from, but they don't. Mm-hmm. And I, I, when you mention your parents, and I, I, there was a, a, well, actually my last guest, uh, Jody Casella, she was talking about her husband and her father-in-law were just huge fans of her and pushed her to make that leap into real estate. And and um, how important it is to have that support system. Whether, now it's great, the, the family members, because you love them and they're always close to you, mm-hmm. but to have someone telling you behind you, you can do this. Mm-hmm. I mean, how, how, you know, if you can express that, how important that is when you're, when you're, because it sounds like you were really out there on your own. I mean, mm-hmm. they're up in Michigan, right? You're down yeah. here. You know, you, you didn't, they were your cheerleaders on the phone or when you, mm-hmm. you know, you saw them, but how important it was that, you know, you could pick up the phone and you know, you were going to get that positive mojo. From mm-hmm. Them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I was thrown into the wolves. I like to say it when I went to USF because my graduating class in high school had like 73 people. Mm-hmm. My first class, basic economics, the auditorium had more people in that <laughs> class, class than yeah. my entire high school. Right. So um, that helped strengthen some of that. But having the backbone and having their support along the way is, yeah, that definitely made a huge difference. Tremendous, mm-hmm. tremendous. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, so much we're kind of on that, on that subject. You know, one of the things, I, you know, I might... I talk about my per, the, all these personal development books from John Maxwell to Sir Han to uh, Cordon, but all of them talk about having the five people around you, not only that are actually, you know, that you're striving to be like, but are, that are, you know, think the same way, have the same uh, uh, creativeness, uh, the ideology to go out and do it on your own versus, you know, some people have the ideology of the nine to five and work for somebody for 30 years, which doesn't happen anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, um, what, 
as you evolved, were you able to create a group around you to help you uh, evolve and, and, and move up and create that support system locally? You know, yes and no. Um, I feel that um, real estate's a very competitive and cutthroat industry, so you have to be very careful who you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, I have a great sphere of influence, and I continue to have them. Um, and now I have a wonderful team of agents who we all support each other. Um, but I feel like having that uh, faith and comfortable confidence in yourself and just constantly in evolving and improving was a big asset as well. So from what I'm, from what I'm hearing then, so you, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing, this is a common theme. I'm going to write a book because I've, I'm hearing these common themes. And then one of the things was relationships, and we're going to get into that. But you, your confidence came from educating yourself, mm -hmm. not just in the classroom, but actually just out there on the street mm -hmm. every day, so mm -hmm. to speak, whether it's reading a book, reading blogs, mm -hmm. watching videos, listening to other people talk uh, on the subject really gave you confidence. Yeah, and I'm a firm believer, like you have to understand yourself before you understand others. Uh, yes. And yes. to understand others, I mean, people do business with people who they like. If mm. you can work on that art of it, um, it helps you in business. And so your strengths are your weaknesses. Your weaknesses are your strengths. Identify those. What do you need to improve to remain comfortably confident? Don't be too confident because people see right through that. Right, right. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I feel that um, you know, that helps tremendously. So how long did it, you, you started doing it part-time. Mm -hmm. How long was it before you got your first sale? Three months. Three months. Mm -hmm. And then, so you had that sale. Mm -hmm. How many other sales did you get before you said, you know what, I'm in full time? Three. Three sales that yeah. you were in. So how, it was yeah. what, a period of six months or? You, uh, yeah, it was about six, six to nine months. Right. Yeah. And then you, you dove in full time. Yes. So that first day, you're used to having some sort of schedule or be on a conference call or meeting a doctor. And now all of a sudden you turn the lights off of that and you turn the lights on of your real estate office. What, what is that next progression did you go through that would you do again? Or like, I made some big mistakes and I tell all my agents don't do this. Oh, I would do it again. No. I mean, I literally, literally like just practices that you do. Cause you turn those lights like, okay, what do mm -hmm. I do? Do I start getting on the phone? Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, you know, Facebook and social media is just kind of evolving at this time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are, cause you're used to it. You know, that schedule that a typical nine to five person comes in, they check in, they log in their computer or whatever they're doing mm -hmm. and they start going, you know, they start hammering nails or whatever. You, now it's you. Mm -hmm. You don't have a boss anymore. You mm -hmm. are the boss. Which is awesome. So how, <laughs> how does Crystal jump in? Um, by turning the day job off, jump in. What what did you start doing this those first uh, those first those next six months mm -hmm. while you were on your own that you look back today and say, oh, that was a waste of time." Or and then on the other side of that question is, I should I should have ten x that. I should have done more of that. So that one you may have stayed for. That was a deep question. That was pretty deep. <laughs> so I think trying working hard and smart, mm -hmm. and also don't forget to recharge. So not recharging my batteries when I should have, I I do that now. Right. And and I a lot of people say, okay, work smarter, not harder. I think you need to work smart and you need to work hard, but don't forget to recharge because you can have burnout and it can be counterproductive. Right. So if I were to do anything differently, and you know, that's all just comes through experience and maturity and everything, I would... Um, I have that balance a lot better now. And so if I had that back in time, um, I would have probably That's something you could even, teach a new agent. Oh, absolutely. Uh, how to do that and, and actually have a better start than, than yes. you did. Yes. Yeah. I like to think myself more as not un necessarily a real estate mentor, but more of a life mentor to them. Right. Because I feel like if you're not happy at home and with yourself or just, you know, just what life, the challenges life throws up, throws us, it's hard to be successful as a real estate agent. So recharge, when you, that's a, a very wide open term. The first thing someone would say would be take time off and go on vacation, I guess, which we think because sometimes that's not always recharging. Well, how many times have we said we need to take a vacation from the vacation we just exactly. took? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what are some of the things that you do 
then and you do now to, to recharge? So I have a daughter who is nine. So recharging is a little differently um, than recharging before. And I don't think that I've actually gone on vacation and turned off my phone. <laughs> I think more the recharge is just finding some solitude mm -hmm. and just some quietness and decompress. Right. Um, you know, whether it's just going to the gym, on the treadmill, sitting in the sauna, going for a run outside, listening to music. I love listening to music in the car. It's my right. time to decompress before I go home. Right. So I feel like it's not necessarily a weekend away, um, you know, even a full day away. It's more just a couple times throughout the day or at the end of the day. You have to have that hour, you know, sometimes I don't get quite that much, but just to decompress. You mentioned working out and so forth. Is it be, is it because I I mean I'm I'm answering the question because I know the answer for me it's the same way you know sometimes we get up in the morning we're like oh god I gotta work out but we gotta do it I'm gonna do it because I know what it feels like when you're done mm -hmm. you know the uh, what I, I forget the terminology that they I know Daniel your uh, endorphins are mm -hmm. right is that the word mm -hmm. you know get off and, and go off and, and and make you just feel that much better is that does that is that what you're really referring when you go to get on that treadmill? You're, oh, I, you know, everyone hates the actual treadmill, mm -hmm. but it's when you go, all right, I completed whatever it is, 30 minutes, an hour, or whatever you're mm -hmm. doing, and you could step off and say, one, you got your steps in for the day, mm -hmm. and then two, the endorphins go off and you just feel better. Yeah, and so it, it's different with me. I, and my agents, they always laugh at me because I never really turn my brain off and I'm always thinking about yes. business. Yeah. It's yeah. just a different than what's currently going on. It's just a more creative thinking. So that's kind of my decompress. I don't think I've ever really just sat there and not thought about something to improve or grow or mm -hmm. idea. Or well, it's your, uh, it's the way you're um, programmed. Yeah. I mean, I'm, 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 program I'm programmed the same way. I mean, I'm on the treadmill. I'm listening uh, to a podcast, you know, sometimes I like listening to the motivational music, but I, I will catch my brain going off and thinking about, you know, um, who the next guest I might mm -hmm. want to invite on the podcast, or I'm thinking about, you know, how am I going to, uh, you know, market myself differently and, as you are, you know, you probably do the same thing because that's, we're just programmed that way. Mm -hmm. And we Obviously, we're multitasking because we're getting our exercise in at the yes. same time. And don't get me wrong, but, I've signed a yeah. contract from my phone on the treadmill, yeah. too. Yeah. If I had to. Like. <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, most of the time, well, I get I get up early uh, and, and do it so there are no phone calls at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 5 o'clock in the morning. Someone's not uh, calling me, but I'm, I'm already... You know, hey, yeah, if I checked my email, maybe even responded some emails on my phone before I even started type of thing. Mm -hmm. But but I think how... But I really want... What I really want to touch base on and then lead into what you what you do to educate yourself on a regular basis, whether it is a podcast now or reading or whatever, but how important it is, as you just mentioned, to recharge. And recharge means many different things to, to different people, but it's that it, it could be just that 30 minutes a day mm -hmm. of some sort of meditation, mm -hmm. just re letting your brain catch up. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, uh, some of the greatest um, people in history like to take afternoon naps. You know, they went, you know, some of the most richest people in the world, they go and took an afternoon out because their brain now is actually doing what it's doing and catching up to you. Mm -hmm. And now you're, 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 uh, you're more creative. I think I, I find my creativity is in during that time and catching up. And then sometimes you're like, you know what, what, what did I just do? No, I need to go back there and correct that. Because now you're actually taking time and you're letting your brain, brain process mm -hmm. what you've done and what you want to do. You know, and, and it's doing it all on its own. Yes. Really, it's, it's its own own computer um, there. So, um, what does Crystal like to do? She, are you are you listening to podcasts? You like to read books or YouTube videos? What is it that you do to to grab some of that extra education during this time? So, I work really well starting about four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, that's I start reading online. Yeah. Um, it's, I still actually kind of do what I did before. I just do a little bit more in depth and then I have a plan to implement it. Mm -hmm. But um, not necessarily a huge book reader, um, but I love to listen to podcasts and, um, you know, all the National Association, Association of Realtors, Florida Realtors, NAR, all of that. Right. Um, follow all of their, read their, you know, morning news, Inman, RIS Media. Um, that's what I do on a daily basis. I probably spend 
seven, eight hours a week, I would say. Yeah, wow. Um, and a lot of times it's, it's you know, in the morning when I first wake up. It, because, you know, you're a leader. You're now, how big is your team now? How many? I have 10 agents. 10 agents. Mm-hmm. And you got to go in and lead those people. Mm-hmm. They're looking f- to you for asp- uh, inspiration. It's the mm-hmm. word aspiration. Inspiration. Um, they're looking to you for knowledge, and they just assume because your name's on the sign that you know everything, sort of, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but, you know, if you want to and, 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 uh, uh, get your input on this, agree or disagree, or, or what your angle is, uh, I think it's important if, yeah, if you want to lead a team or be the broker, you got to be the motivator in, in some t- sometimes. I mean, hopefully you have agents, you hire agents that motivate themselves because it is, it is they are still 1099s, but to be that leader, you've basically checking in to be the, um, the, the you know, come on with the cattle prog sometimes and, and stick them and say, hey, come on, you know, it's going to be a great day. I did motivational speaking all throughout college, and I continue to do it, and I do a lot of business consulting uh, pro bono, um, mm-hmm. and I I love motivating. Um, Does it, mo- it motivates you too? Oh gosh, it? yes, yeah. I love to help others, and <laughs> yeah. to do it and make money at it is even better, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, and I enjoy it, so right. that's the icing on the cake. But um, you know, with my ten agents, it's it's nice because I haven't recruited. Those agents have all reached out to me, and I'm just scratching the surface. I'm sure. going to start recruiting to get some really um, more good agents right. on my team um, because that is my purpose in life is to give back and motivate. And I've been doing it ever since a very young age. So give us an example. If you can think of, I know I'm throwing you out there, um, but when you have 10 agents, so this probably happens if not every day, at least once a week, but some of the, uh, something that you see in some of the, in, in, in some of the agents and you notice right away and you know, you need to either, you know, reach out, call them in your office or, Hey, Mm -hmm. call them on the phone. What are some things that they're getting down with? And then what, what do you do to kind of give them that little pep talk? So I like to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. I mean, basically the worst that can happen. Mm-hmm. And so I usually try to tell them, okay, just let's take a moment, decompress, and let's here's the worst case scenario. So usually the worst case scenario that I can present to them and that we come up with together isn't that bad. So I'm like, this is the absolute worst. And so they usually calm down at that point. And it's not good to talk about it when they're heightening emotions, although I tell them to call me versus calling a customer. Right. Um, but Yell just, at you first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would love to hear them and make right. them, you know, get it all out. That's fine. Yeah. And, um, and then let's talk about it. And then when you decompress then and recharge, then call your customer. Right. Um, but usually when we talk about the absolute worst that can happen, it's in the grand scheme of things, it's not that bad. Right. And, it, of course, I... I'm an empath, and I feel it with them, and I it, I know it feels bad, and I do sales as well, so I totally go through the ups and downs as well, and mm-hmm. I'm guilty of it. We're all guilty mm-hmm. of it, um, but it's it's at the end of the day, I can paint a brighter picture for them and help them through it, and um, again, the good, bad, the ugly, and usually, it's not that bad at the end. Yeah, of the day. after and after you okay. actually talk it out, you're exactly. like, exactly. Oh, am I really talking about this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? It's so easy to get caught <laughs> up in emotions and it's such a roller coaster in real estate. You know, you're not just selling a printer; you're selling a home. Right. So everybody's the the it's heightened emotions throughout. The buyers are emotional, rightfully so. So are right. the sellers, and so they may not even be handling it. And then we're here, just you know, like a ping pong back and forth, and we get the the best and the worst of all of it. And so sometimes handling that, they just need somebody um, like me to help them through it. So I was just thinking, thinking about this as you're, you're expressing yourself greatly there. Um, You got some new agents that literally are, you know, they're fighting for those first deals because they have dove in they didn't have that day job or may not have the spouse who's making the income and they're not really, you know, uh, what they're doing in real estate is not necessarily needed for them to, to live a, a lifestyle that they're accustomed to and, and having the meal on the table. So so you have that more of the individual agent, uh, single person is more likely what I'm describing. Obviously, there's some stresses of life mm-hmm. that go on. Um, so sometimes, some, would you agree that sometimes some of this emotions uh, or negativity thinking that everything's down on them is because really it's more outside the business than it is actually the real estate itself. 
Yeah, there's only so much we can control in real estate. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's hard. Those uncontrollable factors um, affect your emotions and how you handle everything throughout the transaction. So, um, you know, absolutely. I I feel that... um, you have to consult. You have to be a counselor in some way. Yes. You know, yes. especially if you see potential. I assume if someone doesn't have potential, you probably best thing to tell them and say you probably need to go do something else. Yes. Um, that thing. <laughs> Obviously, uh, you know they say uh, money can't buy you happiness, but yes, if you are selling homes and busy selling homes, that money's coming in and makes the stress of, oh, you know, there's this one sale that we're having problems with. But you know what? If it falls out, it falls out. We're gonna definitely do our best to get it. But I'm not. It's, it's not gonna determine whether or not. I go on vacation or I, I can eat next month. Mm-hmm. You know, it, there's a there, there's a, um, a huge gap in there. And, I, and that's where I think the leadership, you know, yourself and the, and the many other uh, brokers or team leads that, that take on a lot of these young realtors that hopefully have potential is why they brought them on their team. Um, that can be somewhat taxing, but it's something that you've chosen to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I enjoy doing it. Yep. So that leads us into what I want to talk about, this clear guidance with shining results. Where'd you come up with that phrase? Um, it just clicked. <laughs> I, I, it, it was, so I know, um, re, you know, everyone's results driven. Mm-hmm. And then I wanted to bring in the company name and everything into the tagline. So shining results. I mean, ultimately, I think that's what the buyers and sellers care about. And right. that's, it's all about them. Right. So in the clear guidance, I mean, communication is key. Um, there's so many uh, avenues to the transaction. If you don't have clear guidance, you're not going to have shining results. So right. it just clicked. No, I didn't know. Just, I was probably on the treadmill beautiful. and it just popped <laughs> in my head. <laughs> it, no, it, it, uh, it, it, it it, it, it actually says a lot. I mean, those, what, uh, one, two, what's it, five words there actually say a lot. Obviously, tag on to you. It's, uh-huh. a, it's a great uh, slogan uh, yeah. to, to go on uh, with you. But so 15 years you've been in the business. Um, well, actually, you've been, you've had uh, uh, your own brokerage now. What has it been? Three, um, five years. Five years now? Yeah. yeah. So what did you learn from your previous brokerages Mm -hmm. that you took well let's talk about the good bad and the ugly right that's what you mentioned what were the good bad and uglies that you that you had in the previous that you kept out brought in Mm -hmm. uh to the to your brokerage so i would say the good was i was thrown into the wolves again here Mm -hmm. i am doing real estate so i felt very comfortable going into an office that said okay here are the tools um the bad was um it's kind of a large split (laughs) (laughs) and um very resourceful and i felt like already um the resources that we have as being a realtor there was some other outside sources that i could rely on Mm -hmm. For that, um, the ugly, I'd say, you know, you're more of a number in some brokerages. Uh, don't get me wrong; everything has shaped me to where I am, and it was great experiences. But I would say that was probably a little bit more of the ugly side. Well, you, you, well, you mentioned early um, your technology savvy, mm-hmm. and you know, when you you were just talking about this, it made me think. You know, it's it's probably much easier today than ten years ago, and obviously further back for you to go out on your own because the dependency on that large brokerage, you know, some of the big names that everyone, you know, sees on television or whatever, or you like said, Hey, name a real estate brokerage. I mean, most people can name, you know, a handful of the, the big names offer that information. But the reality is if you're technology savvy and know and what you were doing and what you've basically expressed that one of the things you're great at is digging this stuff up and finding it on YouTube or reading the blogs and getting this information, That's all they're feeding you, and now with technology, it's out there. Yeah, and that's why I like being a boutique broker. Um, So I'm a firm believer, if you don't evolve, you die, especially Mm -hmm. in this industry. So I can quickly adapt and pivot and implement it and then give it to my agents um, and and be efficient and effective at the same time. Yeah, well, that's that's leadership, Mm -hmm. and that's that's what you're doing. You're deciphering what's needed. And then passing it on and, and explaining the importance of it or where to stick it on the wall is what I always say. I think a lot of, there's so much information out there today, you can get yourself so uh, overwhelmed 
Yes. And but the you, sometimes you need either someone like yourself to tell you, but this is what's important. Mm -hmm. This other stuff, you know, read for your leisure. But this is the important stuff that you need to know today to get you through today, this week, this month. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I think you, there's definitely. Um, I, t I talk a lot about social media um, and uh, in like doing videos and, and you know, obviously social media people said videos, videos, social media is where, you know, where it's at. And there's some people that are really good at it. There's others that want to do it, but they're, and you just, you just got to go and do it mm -hmm. and, uh, and move forward. And what's in what, you know, pick out the, the important things to put on there that you don't, don't add all that extra. Don't worry about all that extra stuff. Mm -hmm. Clear that out of your, clear that out of your mind. Mm -hmm. I was watching, I was, uh, I don't know if I was watching a motivational video or, or, something this this weekend i saw something and just made sense is clearing those uh getting those people in your life that are drawing you down that drag you down that if you want to move forward and i assume as you as a leader and and focused on your 10 people and in your you're not only your personal success because you're still producing mm -hmm. and their personal success you you don't have time in the day for those people that are dragging you down no uh, it's toxic you yeah. know and um, you have to, it's something you have to constantly remind yourself mm -hmm. um, and reevaluate. And when I do find that there was a little bit more challenging transactions, or I feel bad saying it transactions because it's not a transaction, it's more paper, um, <laughs> right. you know, a very important um, um. sales, uh, home sale. Mm. Um, you have, I try to reevaluate after every step into it. Okay, this turned out to be a little bit more stressful. Um, how could I have handled this differently? Sure. Um, and sometimes I can control that and sometimes I can't. And handling it as, okay, what um, actions could I have done differently, but also how could I have handled it personally right. um, differently so it's it's not too draining on you. Right. And so it's important to remind yourself about that plus who you surround yourself with. So to, to stay recharged. <laughs> when you have, because um, my, my wife's an agent, so I hear the stories in my home as well. When you're dealing with, you know, unfortunately there's some, I don't know if you want to say not so good agents, not so experienced agents, or maybe some of those agents who are, um, you know, we hear the horror stories where they're, they're, they're not calling their broker and venting on their broker. They're venting on their client or they're venting on the agent on the other side of the transaction or just being plainly difficult. Almost like the, I, I've heard some stories. I'm almost like, are you trying to, you trying to kill this deal? What are you, what are you trying to, what are you trying to do? What are what are some things that you know? Because I'm sure you 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 know what I'm talking about. You've had some of these toxic agents on the other side, not your agent, but mm -hmm. the, you know the listing or selling agent you're working with. What do you what do you do to kind of you know check up with yourself to say, okay, this guy's got a problem or this girl's got a problem on the other side, but we, I got to make this happen. Mm -hmm. What what are some of the, the checkpoints that you go through your your uh, brain as you uh, you're just talking about? You you do a review. In your experiences in 15 years, you probably have dealt with this numerous times. Mm -hmm. What do you do to gain control of the situation, knowing you're the superior agent and, and making sure everybody ends up where we want to be at the closing table? Um, so, first of all, I never, ever really raise my voice or try to get in some type of conflict with the agent. Mm -hmm. um, because at the end of the day, our goal is both to get to the closing table. So, I always no matter what, a text or a phone call, just remain my professional composure on that end. And the mind is a powerful thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually, I mean, it seems so simple is to change your thought process of how to handle it. And just think positive and take a deep breath. Sometimes just walk away for a minute. Mm -hmm. um, and then I like writing down to the pros and the cons. Um, and that actually helps keep me focused as I'm dealing with Of how conflict. you're going to work through this yes. deal. It might have yes. some difficulties, yep. some repairs or whatever going on. Yeah, it helps yeah. with conflict resolution. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Is that, it's, I think um, we don't know what's going on in other people's lives all the time. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I, I think of when I'm driving, I think of the stories we see of road rage, right? And we don't know what's going on in that other person's life. If he's trying to get in, let him in. Is it really going to change your day if you let somebody cut in front of you? I mean, re does it really matter? At the end of the day, the bottom line is you want to go home to your family and yeah. you know do what you do, whatever you do. So 
do I want to tick that guy off? I don't know what happened in his life. Maybe some, maybe his, his father just passed away. Who knows, right? Um, and it just, you know, or, you know, his wife told him not to come home. <laughs> Who knows, whatever, right? So whatever that situation is. And it's a, a take a moment, like you're saying, it, it, you know, write down, calm them down. Don't, ra- don't raise your, because you just don't know what triggered them. Mm-hmm. Um, and they may never tell you. Maybe afterwards they do. But you may never know why they were, that day they were just like off the handle. Yeah, and really trying to digest it because mm-hmm. when their emotions are high, they actually sometimes their delivery was incorrect. You mm-hmm. know, it was just a miscommunication. Right. So digesting through all of that is key. What do you think? Uh, so you have 10, ten agents mm-hmm. um, now. Most of them been with you for a while. How long or did you start? How fast did you grow in the last five years? Or do you always have 10 agents? Uh, no, I've had, let's see, my um, one agent has been with me for four years now. Mm-hmm. Um, I comfortably grew. Um, I was doing more sales before, um, but now I'm to the point, again, I'm just scratching the surface. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's as of two years ago is when I started having a, more than a handful of agents. Right, yes. right. So what is it? That you are, your um, your ideology, your culture within mm-hmm. Crystal Clear, mm-hmm. that that you feel sets you apart, or you try to use to set you apart from other agencies. So I was um, busy, busy mom and productive mom, um, and I try to take my crazy busy fifteen years of experience, mm-hmm. really in the past ten years um, of being a mom. Um, and share that life work balance with them with time saving tools, technologically advanced, how to be efficient, how to be effective, and for me to be comfortably aggressive with them. Um, I try to understand their learning style. Um, I do like it's a fun, it's like a dispersonality, but it's yeah. it's not. It's real fun, a fun way to approach it mm-hmm. and figure out, you know, what is it that makes them successful. And my definition of success may not be the same definition of someone else. So finding that and really what they want and then being comfortably, like I said, comfortably aggressive with them. If they want me to micromanage them, I'll micromanage them. Um, If they're the type where they don't want to have to come in the office, no problem. If that's how you work best and you want to work from home, no problem at all. Right. Comfortably aggressive. Mm -hmm. So... With a fun, I like a fun working environment as well. Mm-hmm. I just, I, I like the, the comfortably aggressive. And I think that, well, I think that's one of the challenges as, as any leader. And I, and as I guarantee, I guarantee it's in this Jack Welch book right here. He's probably talking about, he probably doesn't use comfortably aggressive though, mm-hmm. but how you tailor your leadership to the individual mm-hmm. that you're working with. Um, yeah, because there are like you could get you could jump right in my face and because I'm I'm that's old school to me and that's how I was brought up. If they weren't in your face, they didn't care. Um, I'm talking about coaches and so forth. Um, and I'm sure you may have some people where you can really, you know, stick. And there's some others where you got to just be like, give them all the warm and fuzzies, and then kind of start digging into the, you know, kind of soften the the situation so that it opens them up and then you can actually have a conversation to, you know, because your goal is obviously, uh, you know, you know your own personal uh, growth, but you want to see them grow. That's why they're there. That's why they came to work with you is for, for you to get them to rise up, right? They, they obviously, they see you as uh, someone who is um, – more experienced, uh, you know, more polished than they are, and they want to learn from you. Right? Be a chameleon. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's important, you know, not necessarily just with customers, but also with business. So I try to be a chameleon. What mm-hmm. makes them comfortable? People do business with people who they like. And so how can I help you and make you enjoy it? Would you say that's one of your one of your keys to your success? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, there's no, I, it's, it's, I feel like all throughout the day, that's what you do. You adjust and adapt to that situation. Mm-hmm. The, I mean, this is great leadership for those that are listening uh, to you. I mean, if you really think about it, really sit down and think about it, those great, those managers, those bosses, whatever in your life that you've had, that you look at how they handled you individually. Um, I think, I think some, one of the greatest things that, that if you, we really think about it, everyone, everyone that's um, even, you know, presidents on down, they didn't get to that level. They memorize people's names. 
um, you know, what people want to hear their name. It's it's true. They actually people want to hear their name. So to be able, when you haven't seen them in a while and they go, "Hey, Crystal, how you doing?" That makes you feel good. Oh wow, you remembered my name. Mm-hmm. You know, because um, I forget names all the time. I'm terrible at it. I, I really actually I've, I've for I don't know 20 years now. I keep telling myself I need to like take one of those courses where they teach you how to, you know polish that up because that's one of my my worst things i can, I can recognize faces all over the place but when <laughs> it, you know it might take me uh, two or three minutes oh yeah that's her that's the name uh that's so i'm really poor at that but that just goes at with the importance of being that chameleon as a leader and you know to deal with to juggle 10 plates you got 10 agents and you're juggling them and they're all spinning at different speeds and they're all at different levels and that, that takes that takes a, a lot out of you too it does. Um, a part of my whole reevaluating every stage of whether it's the you know home sales or um, mentoring my agents, um, I try to get a flexible system as well, and I feel like I'm I learn from them as well. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm able to put some systems in place that has made that um, very manageable. Right. Because um, again, I'm just scratching the surface, and I am going to continue to grow and being able to you know, conform um, to their individual need is a goal. And in order to do that, they're just like any other successful business that grows, there has to be effective systems. Do you feel sometimes because I, you, you're, you're like me, you're, your mind's always going and you're thinking of bigger, better, faster ways that sometimes you have to, you have to stop yourself because you just implemented this and now you're like already thinking about that. And have to say, you know what, I need to follow through on this right now. I need to see if that's going to work. Because if I keep changing on the, uh, uh, I knew when I was in telecommunications and cell phones, if you've ever been in that business, it was always the flavor of the day. Corporate, this is what, the uh, corporate wants everyone greeting customers this way. Uh, no, they want them greeting them that way. No, they, they want you to do this, this, and this. And it's like every week there's something different. They're trying to analyze all these little things when really they need to just, stick with that yes those are other good ideas but let's write those down right now because we need to follow that through do you feel you sometimes you get caught in that with your yeah evolving systems yeah and um so what i normally do like um i implement and then also teach my agents on this for um part of time management so we have you know a list of all of our to do's Mm -hmm. and then you prioritize it Mm -hmm. and if you're feeling overwhelmed knock out a lot of the little stuff at the beginning um, if you if you just have a hard time focusing of everything you have to do that day, so take an hour to get all the little quick five minute tasks. Right. Um, then do I mean anything that's pressing and time sensitive? Then um, anything that's customer service related, and then and then focus about money generating. Um, and then also you have other tasks on that, but I kind of put it in an order. Right. Um, because it's so easy. There's a lot of little things, and also um, I'm trying to get a little bit better at this as well, but. Um, don't be afraid to delegate. You know, if your your strengths are your weaknesses and your weaknesses are your strengths. Mm-hmm. So identify those, focus on what you're best at, and then delegate. Find somebody smarter than you in that area where you need improvement. That totally leads me into a question, uh, and I'm glad you're because I was actually thinking this question, and then you brought that up, and I'm like, this is exactly what I'm what I, what I want to lead with next. And that is you've you yourself have become successful. You probably have some other agents that have reached a point where they are busy and when is it time to like break off that? When's it time to get that transaction coordinator uh, in the real estate? When's that time to get the, that person to do the 15, 20 hour, uh, hour job because you need to focus on what makes you the $500 an hour. And that's getting that next client or spending time with that next client or spending the right time with the client to get the referrals that you want. Cause that's where, that's where the money generation is going. When do you, and I'm sure you've probably experienced this not only with yourself, but some of the agents that have grown with you, uh, you know, over the years that when do you step in and say, Hey, it's time we get you some help. So what's, um, the beauty of my brokerage is I actually have, um, a wonderful licensed assistant on staff and she offers a la carte services. So if they're not quite ready, but they just need for this one transaction seems a little bit more difficult and time Mm -hmm. consuming or they're going on vacation, they can reach out to her because I understand that having that overhead, you have to be very careful Um, and not all of them are very comfortable with that. It's also hard with control to to finally just hire somebody and say, okay, that's all in your hands. So um, 
the a la carte services has been wonderful for them. Right. Because you can, I mean, as an agent, you start getting busy enough. You could spend hours online, like you're, you're going to do a listing and you're trying to run comps. You're spending hours, you know, l- you know, doing that because you've got multiple listings coming up. Or, you know, as you know, it is, it's feast or famine. One day the phone doesn't ring and all of a sudden n- next morning 10, 10 customers call. Now you're juggling and you're trying to run around and give them all the attention, but you're just now overwhelmed. And then you got you not only make, the, make contact with them and what they're, what they're looking to do, whether it's buy or sell or whatever, now you got to go and start doing your work. This is what you get paid for, to run the comps, to start obviously right now inventory so low, so you're trying to find these little needles in the haystack. And so at, I, going back to reevaluating every step of the process, so I normally break it down. I try not to calculate my commission too much because I don't want to focus on just you right. know, money, although it helps. But that's, it, it, that's, it, follows to, it follows if you're doing the right things. Yes, yes, yeah. absolutely. So what I do at the end, I'm like, okay, so here was the pay. Here's how much I made. And I go through about approximately how many hours. I try to cre- keep track a little bit. It's hard because it's right. a lot of little things. You want to measure around. yourself. You want to know so, where yeah. you yeah. So I usually go back and reevaluate that and, and break it down by an hourly rate. And I'm like, so at the end of the day, I'm, if I felt with that transaction, it was more time of doing stuff that wasn't productive. Um, that's how I kind of evaluate, okay, now it's time to outsource. Um, in actually, I have it in house, but mm-hmm. have someone else. How ha- right? Else you got you got that because there are people who like that hourly nine to five. Mm-hmm. That's that's their zone, or they have other aspirations in life, so they're good with that. And sometimes they're better at it. Yes. Hopefully. Yes. Yeah. It's <laughs> nice to find. I mean, in those areas, it's nice to find you know hire someone that knows uh, even more than you. Yeah. I mean, they're. Uh, I will. I mean, I'm gonna. Hopefully, she's listening. My my assistant is. Miss Congeniality, she's awesome on the phone. I am a Gemini. Uh, I go from one, I am a Jekyll and Hyde sometimes. I My <laughs> my adrenaline gland will go off or or something will just like, you know, maybe a problem with a loan or something or s- someone's not doing something that I need them to do because I can't do it for myself. So, the, you know, the, the frustration sometimes comes up. But there's some, she's just has more of a time patience than, than I do. My, you know, patience is probably empathy and patience are my two weaknesses. <laughs> yeah, so she, on the other end, we talk about the disc assessment. She's, you know, a high C, I'm a high D. I mean, but your strengths are your weaknesses and your weaknesses are your strengths. That's so. Right. So, so, but to be, be able to have someone that compliments you on mm-hmm. that and hopefully is better than you. Yes. You know, you don't have to be the best at everything, you know, because if you, like yourself, you raised at a level in this business. You, If you want to, that unlimited income, which it can be, but you've got to have, a, at some point, you've got to be able to bring on some people to do some of those those time-consuming tasks mm-hmm. that put you, put, put you more out doing what you're doing that's really making the money. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, $25 million in 2021 mm-hmm. for your office. What do you, what do you, what's your... Vision, uh, actually, I don't, Daniel. I don't know. If I put it, put that uh, little clip from Facebook. I stole. If you want to show everyone on Facebook, so 2022, and that's a great. You, I asked the headshot. That is your headshot that you sent. When, that's a beautiful picture of you. Not a, you're very beautiful, but that's that's a that, that's a <laughs> killer you. picture. If I was like looking for a real estate agent, I saw that picture. I'd be like, oh my god, she's badass. Watch out, 2022. <laughs> she's gonna tear you. <laughs> yeah, don't get in negotiations with her. <laughs> you know. Um, a great shop. But what's your what's your what's your vision for for your team, uh, and uh, you know to get off on a great twenty twenty two. What what are you preaching to your team? What are you are you doing anything different this year? Yes. So, um, like I said, I'm just scratching the surface, mm-hmm. and um, I'm going to be recruiting more agents. Um, my goal is to get to thirty agents by the end of the year. I know that year, I can whoa, comfortably that's a pretty good do that. Task. Yeah. Yes. And I think it, that can be easily done. And I have a whole plan of action and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's one of them. And it's interesting. You mentioned social media. We're just scratching the surface on that. Thankfully, it's been pretty much referral basis. Well, hopefully and add this I to am, your social media. Yes, piece. this yeah. is a great start. Yeah. Um, so we have the business is there. The content is there. We just, I, we just need to implement it. And right. that's what we have in our plan as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that's important. So, um, you know, I'm not going to, ho- I have enough. Uh, of a team and strong team, we want to get more. That if I start advertising, I already get a lot of leads. It's 
it's we're going to be unstoppable. And I'm right. very excited about 2022. I can tell you're excited yes. about 2022. 20 more agents. So wow, that's a lot of. I just man, hopefully I hope I, I just um, I'm gonna I'm gonna hope on you that there were a lot of experienced agents come over because I don't want you to get a, a lot of inexperienced agents right, draw you off right. the field because you need to be out in, on the field and, and, and leading. That's that's an amazing uh, amazing task. What would you say? Because obviously you you're thinking of incentives, um, you know, from the agent. Not not only work with you obviously, mm-hmm. but what are some of the things you think are the most important for? And here's your sales pitch, really, right here. You can give it. To, a, to possible agents who may be listening. Um, what is it that you think is the maybe the one or two, three most important things that they come with, come over to Crystal Clear that you're going to deliver that's important to that agent and why they should come over and work with you? A plan that works for them. I would say it's all about you. So if you want leads, I have leads. Mm-hmm. Um if Everyone, you, if you don't want leads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's whatever works for them. If if a um, if the split is a challenge, let's talk about it. Let's right. do a win-win situation. I mean, having that flexibility, um, you know, I have my standard, you know, packages to offer them. But that flexibility, I feel like in real estate is key, especially mm-hmm. in today's world with real estate. It's ever-changing. So uh, really, let's talk about what works for them. And then, you know, a lot of the stuff, a lot of it isn't reinventing the wheel on some things, mm-hmm. but taking that, t- the time-saving tactics. I mean, we can't get back time in our life and we can't get back age. Mm-hmm. So let's utilize my 20 years of being in business and sales and my ups and downs and how can I make your life easier? You know, I mean, even I, I consider, especially being a busy mom, you know, that 20-minute drive somewhere and 20-minute back. I calculate that in my head in a good way right. to try to improve. That was 40 minutes. How could I, I mean, is do I have to go there for 20 minutes or why did I go there? Do you have to come in the office? Can we jump on a Zoom? Mm-hmm. So I understand your time is valuable. And I also understand that you're in it to make money. We all have to make money and pay our bills. So let's come to a good happy medium with the split and time-saving tactics and being to be efficient and effective and still be competitive, you know, tech savvy and my test for sales managers to me and I guess they're a broker sales manager this is pretty much the role you're taking um, owner of the company doesn't really mean anything but the sales manager someone who's someone who's responsible for your sales because if you're not doing the sales we got to ask the sales manager what's going on the sales manager needs to implement things to hopefully move that salesperson or that salesperson needs to move on the number one thing, and this is probably just something you just didn't think of because you didn't know the question, so you're just you know coming out with what's on your heart. How important is it when you have that difficult deal that with a new agent to be able to pick up the phone and say, and you answer it mm-hmm. or return it immediately and say, Crystal, what would you do? I try to answer all the time. Because I realize if they're calling me, they really need assistance. Yeah. And that call is so important. And, you know, it's so rewarding. And I'm an empath. I truly feel if they're stressed out, I, I mean, I try not to get stressed because right. I'm going to be their backbone for them. Right. But I really I want like them that. to do well. Like, if, if they're losing sleep over it, chances are I'm probably losing sleep over it, too. And I'll right. wake up, think ideas at 3 o'clock in the morning. They'll pop in my head. And, well, oh, we how should, you how know, important has it been in, in the last three years, I mean, for the experienced person to structure, to help structure a deal, to win? I mean, because mm-hmm. there's getting multiple offers on these listings and so yes. forth. Not only, on, actually, on both sides, really, and you think about it, the buyer side, how to structure a deal that hopefully you make the final two or three or four offers so they're talking about you. Mm-hmm. And then from the listing side, to be able to call you and say, hey, which one of these offers is the best one? That's why I like to stay actively involved in sales as well. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like this industry changes so fast. And I I still learn every transaction. If I'm learning every transaction, so is every other realtor. And so to be able to, again, provide that experience and the ups and downs that I went through so that it can make their life better, so valuable. All right, every transaction you learn something from. So I'm going to tailor, uh, change directions. There's one thing I wanted to mention because you, when I did your intro and I saw that mentioned several times is the term relationships. Mm-hmm. 
I know I'm saying something I know you you would agree with, just learning from you and, and reading what you put on you know, your social media and your bio, but how important that relationship is, and you learn something from every la- uh, every transaction because a lot of times it's the relationship within the transaction more than the actual physical house or repairs that need to be done or whatever, all those other things that go on all the time. They're just different colors, where it's actually relationships in every, how you dealt with their, how you dealt with that hostile seller or how you dealt with that agent who wasn't, didn't know what they were doing or uh, how you negotiated. Would you agree that it's actually really the relationships that makes every one different? It does. And so understanding how those buyers and sellers want everything handled as well, how you present to them, it's personalities, relationship building. Um, You know, there's, technical a lot there's some stuff that doesn't change about the contract but it's really oh my gosh the art of negotiation i love that book Mm -hmm. i mean how you tailor it is as simple as how you word the email can make or break a deal yes and so i feel that's in in it keeps that relationship and that trust going 100 percent. very important so if i was to write a book uh, your your uh, number forty did I say forty eight we're forty eight episode forty eight episodes yeah um, write a book on the first forty eight episodes there would be a good probably uh, probably half the book it would be one chapter talking about everyone's uh, relationships so I want to kind of finish with this in in in, a, in, a, in the meat and bread of our our interview expand on because you do talk about it in your bio. That that's what your technology in the relationships and how, you know, in 15 years, you know, what are you, what do you do now differently than say you did in year one when it comes to actually building those longer term relationships, whether it's with a, a vendor or a loan officer or a home inspector or your client, your buyer or seller? I think continuing to understand them and what, they really want is important and finding that balance of so like when I deal with some executive clients that I know that they look at PowerPoint presentations that's how I'm going to give them the comps or the engineers yeah that's how I'm (laughs) going to give them the comps and so that you know just with experience and stuff I've been able to improve on that and that really helps and you know just be genuine I mean people can see through if you're just not a wholeheartedly honest and genuine to right. them. I mean, care. Right. And just continuing to do that and ask about their family. You know, follow up on a holiday. Tell them, Merry Christmas, you know, or I've been thinking about you. And I've done that before. I, you know, think about customers, how they're doing or the child is doing. I'll drive by their school. I'll pick up the phone and call them. Hey, how, you know, mm-hmm. and at the same time, though, you got to have that balance of you still have to be tech savvy because that's a big part of the success. But those good old fashioned work ethics, and I'm more of a newer one of the newer millennials Mm -hmm. so i have that still that good old-fashioned work ethic but that technology edge to it and so i i feel like that is a part where we're selling a home not a house right and it's their biggest investment right and if you just take it as a let me just text them and you know don't get me wrong some customers that's all they want they're so busy and they said no just text me whatever but understanding what they want how they want it presented and handled Uh, again, to make them feel comfortable. But you know what's amazing, though, with those people that, that – because uh, I've done complete loans over text or Facebook mm-hmm. Messenger. But when you send them a card, an actual old-school card. Handwritten. Blows them away. Mm-hmm. They're like, what? I got mail? <laughs> yeah. But I was listening to a podcast the other day. Was, uh, someone um, uh, said – actually, it might have been even one of those little Instagram uh, reels or something. And they were talking about, if you – you need to talk to your uh, buyers and sellers, your 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 customers that you're serving, the same way you'd be talking to a relative doing the same transaction. When you're on the phone talking to them, talk to them the same way as if they were your brother or cousin. That you're you're doing the best. You do do whatever you can to take care of them and express that, you know, the same way that 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 that, that just rang with me. I'm like, man, that's just that's really simple. I mean, you you. You know, because oftentimes I will, I'm one of those people who I'll run into a high school buddy or college buddy that I hadn't seen in years, 
but I almost like pick up the conversation. Like we saw just sales just yesterday, you know, our, our, where, where they're at, I, you know, and just talk about things and, and just flow right into it. Um, and I think some of my friends appreciate that because I treat them as if we're like, we're talking every day, but our world takes us all different directions. And the fact that you are, are make a customer feel like they're your family, they're your brother, they're your cousin, and you're taking care of them in a similar transaction. And that's the power of passion shining through. You yeah. know, it brings meaning to life too. Yeah. Um, for sure. I really care. You know, at the end of the day, care. Care for the shining results. <laughs> what I'm going to ask this last question, actually. We're right at an hour now. <laughs> Because I wrote this down here, and I wrote it down, I didn't. I, I realized I want. I have to. There's uh, there's probably five more questions that I want to ask you. But what do you think would be the common denominator of a successful real estate agent? Work smart and hard. That's. I mean, you don't get paid until you close, so. It's very easy to work hard, but if you don't work smart, there's no way you're going to make it as a real estate agent. All right, so let's let's help our help our listeners out there from the smart side. And we talked about it a little bit here, but reach out to those that are more experienced because a lot of them have fallen on their face. Well, no reason for you to fall on your face the same way, right? To get around people like yourself, go to need go. To Nifar, meet some meet some of the top people in the area, ask them out to lunch or coffee, and learn about these these smarter things that you're talking about. Would you agree? Yeah, and I think I think the power of passion is unstoppable. You got to truly enjoy it, um, and not every aspect of it is 100 percent enjoyable. But if you don't have that passion behind it, I don't I don't know why you're doing it. Yeah, you know, there's just. You, there's more to life. <laughs> I, I like, you know, that's actually something that the passion, I don't think I've ever had anybody say that that way. It's actually very interesting you say that. And when I was being passionate there for a second, you, you caught that. Um, you have to be, I, I'm passionate about what I, I'm passionate about what I do. Now, I, I measure uh, someone, um, I expressed to someone here recently um, that to me, my six, yeah, you can measure your success by the dollars. How much money did you make last year, or how many how many actual sales you had? Some, you know, there's there you can measure it that way. But I think what, and I, I think you would agree with me, when you're doing all the right things, when you're finding those systems, and you see that you see them successful, or you see them help your ten agents become more successful, isn't that the true high? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's no better feeling. That's than the that. passion about it. That's that's yep. where I get passionate. I was like, wow, I came up with an idea, I put it in play, and look at it succeed. And I feel like it's that it's your intrinsic motivation shining through, which helps you have a solid, successful career. If you're passionate about it, all those other little characteristics that make you succeed, they're already there. That extra drive, that extra, you know, staying an extra two hours or a twelve hour day versus a ten hour day that day. If you're passionate about it. Your, your, That'll fall into place. The passion about it, your, your not only family sees it, your, your circle of influence sees it, but the individual people that you may, you know, you may do the transaction and never hear from them again. Hopefully they see your passion and refer you to someone else because they realized this girl was on my team. You know, she, she killed it, you know, before. So, all right, I'm going to go into my two-minute warning questions as we wrap sure. up here. Is it more important who you know or what you know? Can I say both? <laughs> Some people cop out to that one. <laughs> I guess who you know. But the average person knows six real estate agents. So also that, what true. you know. That's true. But I mean what's made you successful? I mean, I mean you I mean you obviously educate yourself. We talked a lot about that today. But um, I would say what you know than if it was my specific. I mean I had to organically grow you organically my did. clientele mm-hmm. um here. And by doing that, I provide value with all the knowledge and experience behind it. So I wasn't born and raised here. Right, so, right. Okay. Yeah. It's a loaded question. Uh, but here's a, here's a semi, semi-personal one, not really too personal, but what's on your travel bucket list? Oh, I want to go to Europe. Um, you know, how do I think about that right now when I'm 
totally involved in my company and growing that only. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But sometimes you, you do, they like talk about recharge. Sometimes you have to like, hey, I'm doing really well. I'm only going to be this age for so long. I need to actually, I don't want to be 70 years old and, and who knows what my health is going to be like and then try to go, right? Yeah. And you no, got to take just, some time. I love European food and my best friend is from Europe. So I have a kind of, I think a connection with that. I'm really going to sure. love going over there to visit. Cool. So, yeah. Who do you think would be a great guest on my show? I think my agent, Natalie Dunlap. Natalie? Okay. Uh, she's also a CEO and owns a marketing company. And she's a powerhouse, and she's one of my newer agents. So she has a marketing company, and then mm -hmm. she's doing sort yes. of part time. Oh, and she's doing awesome at doing real estate. Our, okay, yes. all right. And she's 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 boss lady. Hashtag uh, boss. Lady. Hashtag boss lady. <laughs> okay. Well, let's get in that because I'm I'm scheduling up for you know late late March into April right now. As I got you know a couple shows every week, so let's get her let's get her scheduled up for maybe early April. Okay. Uh, and, and get her in. I appreciate you coming on today. Yeah, thank I, I enjoyed you. the conversation. What an honor. Uh, please so like sweet. and share those listeners, especially on the on the Apple, uh, Spotify, wherever you're listening into us on. Uh, you know, please like and share, make comments. I, I would appreciate it. And uh, Crystal, if someone wants to be on your team or wants to utilize your services as a real estate agent, what's the best way to contact you? Call nine zero four House fifty four. I you know I was watching some of your videos and I was like, what is this she talking about? This nine zero four House fifty four. Did you just? fall into that uh, number yeah, or did you it actually happen to be one that was available at the time and it had a little ring to it so. 904 <laughs> house 54. 54 made me think i was like, does she is, is that her street address or something 54 <laughs> what's the order 904 house 54 that's awesome so reach out to crystal uh obviously she's trying to recruit and she's a leader obviously you heard her ideology today and uh sit down with her i'm sure she'd love to have a cup of coffee if, if you're considering and uh, coming over to her brokerage yes thank, thank you, you.